everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about CMS neural network. Some people call it as CMS neural network and some call it as CMS neural network. So just let us try to understand what are CMS neural networks, right? So again, it is your choice whether you are going to pronounce it as CMS or CMS network. So it has a special feature that differentiate them from the traditional convolution neural network. So what happens here, there are two identical sets of convolution layers that actually share filters, which means they have, we will be feeding two outputs and from that we will be getting an, uh, uh, sorry, we will be feeding two inputs and we will be getting an output score. So this model can take two inputs and tell us how similar they are uh, and how different they are, right? So they extract the feature vectors from each image, then recombine into a single vector by taking the element-wise absolute difference between the two feature vectors. Uh, and finally, it is uh, put into the sigmoid function, which outputs the similarity scores. And this tells us a high level, how, the, uh, how those two images are, are actually, whether it is similar or dissimilar, right? So this is how we have to, uh, this is where the application of CMS network uh, uh, deals with, them, right? So uh, let us try to understand this in detail. Uh, it consists of twin networks which accept distinct inputs, but are joined by an energy function at the top. So this function, uh, this function computes a metric between the highest level feature representation on each side. So the parameters between the twin networks are tied. So weight tying guarantees that two extremely similar images are not mapped by each network to very different locations in feature space because each network computes the same function. So the network is symmetric. So uh, that whatever we present to distinct images to the twin networks, the top co uh, conjoining layer will compute the same metric as if we were uh, to present the same two images, but to the opposite twins. So intuitively, instead of trying to classify inputs, a CIMIS network learns to differentiate between inputs, learning their similarity. So the last function is usually a form of contrastive loss. So when I tell this as a definition, it sounds to be, a, it sounds to be difficult, but, but this is really very simple, right? So let us try to understand what this Siamese network is, right? So it means uh, like a how uh, I, I'll be introducing two ways of training Siamese networks. So the first method is learning pairwise similarity scores. Uh, so that is really uh, interesting and the easy one, right? So now uh, how to understand this? Like, so Siamese network uh, need a, uh, needs a big data set. And uh, say, for example, we have a set of data and they are labeled data, right? Uh, so this is how we will be uh, doing in supervised learning, right? So let us see like how that works in Siamese networks, right? So here you can see, I'm, I'm going to show you two kind of samples. One is about positive sample and the another one is about negative sample. So let us try to understand what are positive samples. So look at this example now. Say for example, here we have a dog and we have another dog, right? So I can say that comma one, which means these are all similar. This is a positive sample pair and I label it as one. It means that two are of the same kind and we can do the same to the cars, right? So whatever images I have, if they are all the same, then they, I can call it as positive samples, right? So what could be the negative samples? That is very clear, right? So what could be the negative samples? If you see over here, here you can see a car and here it is a butterfly. So negative sample means say car comma butterfly comma this will be zero right so because uh, here uh, car butterfly both are different images so in the we get a negative sample uh, pairs oh, see for example you are taking a uh, tiger and an elephant and both are different so we get the label as zero over here right 
so let us try to understand like we have seen this convolution neural network before so what happens actually so there will be an image it is passed to convolution or pool layer and then convolution pool and then maybe flatten and then we will be getting some feature vector right so the feature vector means here the output or output is basically the feature vector right f of x so just try to understand that we are training the neural network using the training data we have prepared many pairs such as like uh, two uh, uh, persons or two cars or two tigers as well as the uh, uh, labels are from the same class so the label of this pair will be one if both are the same right in this case it may not be the same so just imagine that i have images both the images are the same and say the neural network outputs two features now right so here you can see that okay so here you can see that uh, say for example i have uh, i have uh, two images now right okay so let me take this as the example now so here what i am doing like uh, i have uh, let this be x1 and let this be x2 and uh, so this is f and this is also basically f so h1 i'll be getting it as f of x1 and h2 will be equal to f of x2 right so then what has to be calculated we have to calculate h which is equal to h1 minus h2 it could be the modulus of uh, right so this is nothing but uh, uh, you can write it as z otherwise z is equal to h1 minus h2 it is the difference between the two feature vectors right it is the difference between two feature vectors then we can use several dense layers the z vector here here uh, the output what we get is actually a vector right so then it can be passed to dense layers right we have seen this before dense layers then it can be passed to sigmoid right so when you do this we will be getting in terms of scalar ranging from 0 to 1 so basically we will be getting the similarity of the two input images if they are of the same class then the output should be close to one otherwise if the input images are from different classes then the output should be close to zero right so by looking at the neural network structure we can easily understand why the network is called a Siamese network because uh, the Siamese twins are connected to each other in the figure, right? So that's what I said. This will be connected uh, each other in the figure, but their heads are uh, connected. So we have previously prepared. Uh, uh, so here I can say that uh, the target will be equal to one in this case because these are similar, right? So we will be getting label as one. We set one of the target. We hope the scalar output by the network is close to the target one that's what we expect because both the images are the same and then we can also use a loss function to measure the difference between the target and the predicted scalar so the loss can be the cross entropy of the target and the prediction it matters the difference between the uh, two having the loss we can use back propagation for calculating the gradients then we perform gradient descent to update the model parameters uh, the model has two parts uh, one is basically the convolution neural network which is which i have denoted it as f here which is used to extract features from the input images so here uh, both are exactly the same convolutional neural network they have the same model parameters the other part is the fully connected layers which map vector z to a scalar between 0 and 1. So during training, both parts will be updated using back propagation. The gradient flows from the loss function to vector z and the parameters of the dense layers, knowing the gradient of the loss with respect to the dense layer parameters, we can update the parameters by a gradient descent right further uh, gradient from the vector z to the convolutional neural network uh, f then we can use the gradient to update the parameters of the convolution layers to this end we have uh, performed one round of update uh, right so now let's look into the next one right 
So now, similarly, say, for example, I'm going to do for this here, we can see uh, the negative samples over here, right? So both are negative samples. So let this be F and here also F. So this will lead to H1, right? Uh, H1, H2, right? And here, what will happen? The prediction should be uh, close to zero, right? Uh, because the inputs are different, then we do the same as before to the gradient from the last two dense layers and convolutional layers to update the model parameters. And uh, so uh, this is how uh, basically it will work. So now let us try to understand what is one-shot prediction, right? Uh, so one shot learning is where we learn to recognize the person from just one example. So we train a CNN to learn the representation of a face is not a good idea when we have less images. So the model simply uh, would not be able to, uh, uh, able to learn from the features of the face. So if a new user joins the database, we have to retrain the entire network. So that's going to be really difficult for us, right? So what we do is like we find the degree of difference between the images, right? So we will be using a Siamese network, which learn the function which we defined earlier, a degree of difference between the images. So when we have two images, X1 and X2, we pass both of them to the same continent Instead of generating the classes for these images, we extract the features by removing the final softmax layer. So the last layer will be a fully connected layer having say, for example, 128 neurons. So here f of x1 and f of x2 are the encoding of images x1 and x2 respectively. So here we can find out difference x1, x2 is equal to f of x1 minus f of x2. Uh, so this is how we can find out the difference of the images. So we train the model in such a way that if Xi and Xj are images of the same person, this difference, this difference will be small and Xi and Xj are images of different people, then this difference will be large. So this is the architecture of a CMS network, right? Then also we have to understand how the last function will work with that, right? So we will uh, see that uh, shortly, right? So uh, let me show you like uh, how this basically works. Okay, so let me uh, show you that now say, uh, there is a six way one shot prediction. Okay, say, say, let me write it as six way one shot prediction, right? So what it does is, so here it will have, uh, the, it will have two things. I'm going to tell you two things. One is about support set and another one is about query. Okay, support set and query. Say support set since I call it a six way. So it may be having six test classes and each has one sample, right? So the training data for the CMS network does not contain the six classes, right? So let me say that, say for example, I have an image of a, a dog. Okay, so I have the image of a dog. And here I have, uh, so this could be my query, right? This could be my query. And here I have around uh, uh, six images. Uh, let me write that, okay. So each class has one sample, that's what I said, right? So it could be like a cat, this could be dog, this could be squirrel, and this could be uh, like uh, something like, I can say cow. And then this could be parrot, and this could be a lion, something like that, right? Okay, fine. Let's try to understand this. So these six classes are not in the training set, which is why, like, we, uh, let, let us understand, right? So the query is a dog over here, and we know the query must be among these uh, six classes in the support set. So we need to choose one out of the six classes. So what it will do? We can compare the query image with the images in the support set one by one, taking the query and the uh, this as the input. This as the input. So this is being calculated, and the similarity, say for example, it is showing it as zero point two, right? Now the similarity between this is calculated. Say for example, this is equal to zero point nine. 
let's say this is equal to 0 0.1. Let they, this is 0 0.15, something like that, right? So, or 0 0.20, something like that, right? So, this is 0 0.4 and this is 0 0.3. So, we found that this is something similar to this because it has the maximum similarity score that is 0 0.9. So we predict that the query is a dog. So we have trained the CMS network for computing pairwise similarity score. So this is how the pairwise similarity scores work. So I hope it is clear to you, right? So first one, we tried to understand, um, uh, we tried to understand about uh, uh, this uh, positive and negative sample. And then we have found that this is the input say, uh, so if it is positive sample, it is one, label is one. And if it is negative sample, then zero. So here, what is being done? F of X1 and F of X2, right? And then the difference is being, so it is basically finding out the uh, similarity score, right? And in case if it is, um, no, uh, if it is uh, similar, the target must be closer to one. Right, so this is what we have uh, seen now, right? So that is what happened over here. Say, for example, this is my query. Okay, so this is my query. So what it will do, like uh, here, uh, similarity measures are being calculated, right? So just I'm showing some example. Okay, so the, though it, this is not really connected to this picture. So just imagine that this is being connected to this. Like, so uh, based upon the similarity, so whichever is having the highest similarity, that will be connected to this query. So this is basic, these are basically called a support sets, right? So now let us try to understand the another uh, uh, case like triple, uh, triplet loss. So here, uh, say for example, we have the training data in a different way. Having such a training set each time, we need to select three images as a training sample. Uh, it works in three steps, right? First, randomly select an image from the entire training set as the anchor. For example, say for example, uh, uh, one, uh, let me show you, right? So this is chosen as an anchor, right? So anchor is recorded and then uh, from the similarity class randomly select an image as positive sample right because basically both are same person and we can we have to take another record from the negative sample so hope it is clear right so first i have chosen an anchor then a positive sample and then i'm taking another sample which is entirely different that is that means the negative sample and i'm choosing a negative sample so what we are going to do with this, right? So we have an anchor, a positive sample, and the negative sample. So this is what we understand. So basically anchor and pos uh, positive belong to the same class, and this one belongs to the another class, right? So let us understand what it does. So let me write this as x a let me write this as x positive let me write this as x negative so what will happen so say for example i'm connecting it to f right okay so what will happen now the three f's are the same neural network and so we will be getting like f of x a right f of x a and this could be f of x plus and this could be f of x minus so what i'll be getting it over here uh, D is uh, basically F of, so squared out of norm, right? So what's happening here? So <clears throat> the convolutional neural network uh, extracts the feature vectors. The three feature vectors are taken from the feature images. Then the distance between the positive sample and the anchor in the vector space. Let D positive be the square distance, uh, uh, right? So I'm finding the squared distance, right? First, I'm finding the D positive. So we do the same to find out the distance between the negative sample and the anchor, right? So if I write for the negative sample, what do I get? D minus is equal to, right? Uh, between, the and the, uh, between the negative sample and the anchor, right? Let the negative be the squared L2 norm of uh, X minus F of X negative, right? So we hope 
the network F has such a property, the feature extractors from the same class are nearby, while feature vectors from different classes can be well separated. Right, so the positive uh, should be small because the positive sample and the anchor belong to the same class, uh, but uh, the negative should be uh, large because uh, this uh, they are uh, this is taken from the negative sample right negative the distance between the negative sample and the anchor right so let us reiterate the relation among the uh, three samples so like we can represent it in the feature space right uh, say for example this is uh, this one is say i'm writing it as f of x a right and uh, say uh, let me write f of x plus over here so f of x plus will be over here right so now uh, like when you calculate the square distance between these two uh, vectors that is d positive like uh, this difference will be small right so f of x negative where it could be it could be somewhere over here so this could be f x negative and in case if you find out the uh, difference between anchor and this one sorry anchor and this one this difference is going to be uh, a more right so comparatively to this uh, this is going to be more so hope you uh, you got my point right because this difference is going to be more right so this is very clear so the negative is as large as possible the negative should be much larger than the positive Otherwise, the model cannot distinguish between uh, this uh, positive and the negative sample, right? So based upon the idea we discussed, let's define the loss function now, right? So the positive, already we have seen that squared distance between the positive sample and the anchor in the feature space. So intuitively speaking, the feature vectors of two tigers, uh, sorry, two uh, images should be close. Uh, so we should encourage it, right? And at the same time, when you find out the uh, difference that is the negative is the square distance between the negative sample and the anchor in the feature space. So we hope that the feature vectors of different classes are far apart, right? So in this case, these two are, uh, should be really far apart. Say for example, I am taking uh, this as the tiger and this as the tiger and this as the elephant, then I can say the tiger and elephant is going to be different, right? So I can say that uh, alpha uh, is greater than zero is the margin. So this is nothing but the hyperparameter, right? So we hope that D minus is always greater than equal to D plus plus alpha. So the positive is the distance between uh, the two similar images, the negative should be much larger than the uh, positive basically, right? So I can say that if the negative is greater than the positive by a margin of alpha, then we say that the classification is correct and the loss is zero. If the condition is not satisfied, which means the negative is not sufficiently larger than the positive, then we believe this is a failure. The model could not differentiate uh, the uh, two different images. So there should be a loss. Let the loss be the positive plus alpha minus the negative. So I can say that the loss is D plus plus alpha minus D minus, right? So the positive is small. So the uh, two images are close in the feature space. Also a small loss means the negative is big. So uh, the two different images can be well separated, right? So I can write loss function. We define uh, such a loss function if the positive plus alpha minus uh, D negative is greater than zero, then it is a loss. It means we cannot distinguish between two different images. Otherwise, if the positive plus alpha minus the negative is less than zero, which means the classification is right, then there is no loss. The loss is simply zero here. Such a loss function is called the triplet loss. It is based on a triplet of samples, the anchor, the positive sample and the negative sample. Uh, with the loss function at hand. So we can take the derivative of the loss 
with respect to the model parameters and then perform gradient descent to update the model parameters after an update uh, both the different images will be further apart in the feature space whereas uh, if the images are similar will be closer in the feature space after training the side uh, siamese network we can use a network for one shot prediction so one shot prediction we are giving a support set the classes in the support set are not contained in the training set and we are given a query image it belongs to one of the six classes in the support set we want to classify the query image we have seen the dog with the comparing all the six images right so it will be comparing with the uh, support set in this way it will try to extract features from all the images then compute the distance between the feature vectors uh, for example the query and the dog have a distance of say 200 right then the query image and the next one say around 90 so both are actually dog then the distance is say 90 then the next case it could be 150 the next case it is 179 so something like that so which is the smallest distance over here 90 so query image is a dog and for in the support set with the dog it is matching with the smallest distance so that is how actually it is being done right so siamis uh, networks for solving feature learning uh, so let us uh, have a, a summary on this uh, so we here basic idea is we first train a siamis network on a large scale training set the siamis network learns the similarity and the difference between things after training we can use the CMS network to make predictions. What makes uh, uh, the learning different from standard supervised learning is that the query class does not appear in the training set. For example, the query is a dog, but the training set does not have, uh, you know, have a square class. Thus, to recognize a query, we must provide additional information uh, uh, like it's a support set right the support set is called k way and short so k way means uh, nothing but k, k set classes so the more classes there are the harder the prediction is n short means each class has n samples the fewer samples there are harder the prediction is uh, the hardest problem is one shot learning that is making a prediction based on only one sample with the uh, uh, like it means uh, a semis network at hand we can compare the query with the every sample in the support set to find similarity scores then use a sample in the support set that has the highest similarity score as a prediction right so here we have discussed about the two ways of training the CMS network one is to predict the pairwise similarity score right so there we have taken two images and we take a pair of two images as the input of the CMS network then the images are transformed by convolution layers and the dense layers the output is the similarity score between zero and one one means the two inputs are from the same class zero means the two inputs are from different class the target is either zero or one if the two inputs are from the same class then the target is one if the two inputs are from different class then the target is zero then define the loss function as the difference in the prediction and the target so the goal of the training is to minimize the loss equivalently making the prediction closer to the target so in this way uh, the uh, this network uh, can predict the similarity between the two inputs the other way of training the CMS network is to use the triplet loss so here uh, each time we select three images as inputs they are anchor x a the positive sample x positive and the negative sample x negative right then we use the convolution neural network to extract features from the inputs 
we obtain three feature vectors and then uh, we calculated let the positive be the square distance between the positive sample and the anchor in the feature space let then we found the d negative be the feature distance between the negative sample and the anchor the objective of training is to make the positive as small as possible that is to make the two similar images close in the feature space also make the negative as big as possible that is to make two different images in the feature space with the trained network at hand so we can compare the query image and the labeled image in the feature space prediction a uh, feature space prediction is made based on the distances in the feature space right so this is what we have done here so in case we have to define a triplet loss we have taken an anchor image positive image negative image positive image is the image of the same person that is present in the anchor image negative image is the image of a different person so here we are looking into three images it is called as a triplet loss so we used a for anchor image p for positive image n for negative image so this is what i have discussed like we were trying to find out the uh, square of uh, the distances between them right so we are trying to identify like whether the distance is greater than or uh, not right so if the model output zero for both the above equation will be satisfied so the model might be trained in such a way that both the terms are always zero so this will inevitably affect the performance of the model so how can we overcome this so we have to modify the above equation and we have to add a term alpha which is called as margin right so the loss function can thus be defined as l a p n which means anchor positive anchor positive and negative right uh, so maximum of uh, the difference between uh, Uh, this two, like f of a minus f of p square minus uh, the this one, right? So this I have told it as d positive and d negative, right? Fine. So that is what happening here. You can see this is the anchor image, positive image, and the negative image, and then this is you no know, with the uh, CNN shared weights, uh, and then like uh, we calculated the triplet loss, right? so hope this is clear to you this is really an interesting network to work with cms network so basically we have seen two techniques over here one is about uh, uh, pairwise similarity score and the another one is about triplet loss right